how did Bill Gates sell his first piece of software out of his dorm room when nobody knew his name? Or how did Steven Spielberg become the youngest director in Hollywood history without a single hit under his belt? So the third door was my quest for answers. Success and failure are actually different results of the same thing. So the opposite of success isn't failure. The opposite of success is not trying. And not only was that one of the biggest lessons I learned from Quincy Jones, it's also one of the biggest things I've realized that all the most successful people have in common. There's this innate understanding of that relationship of success and failure and how they're not opposites, but they're actually different parts of the same path. I was 19 years old when I was first hired by Alsop Louis Partners in San Francisco, a high-tech venture capital firm. And it was about one year into working on the third door. I had already gotten, you know, just a handful of interviews when I met this venture capital firm and they brought me on as an associate for the firm. And I learned a lot in those, you know, few years I worked in venture capital. I learned about technology, I learned about investing. And one of the great things about venture capital is you get access to a lot of different kinds of entrepreneurs and a lot of different situations. You know, even just being in Silicon Valley and uh, getting access to learning from such you know diverse people who had been in the technology field longer than I had been alive. So it was this incredible experience, and I couldn't be more grateful. And if anyone is very interested in technology and in finance, venture capital is a perfect intersection for that. And what I learned after interviewing Bill Gates, Lady Gaga, Warren Buffett, Steven Spielberg, I realized life, business, and success is just like a nightclub. There's always three ways in. There's the first door, the main entrance, where the line curves around the block, where 99% of people wait around hoping to get in. That's the first door. And then there's the second door, the VIP entrance, where the billionaires and celebrities go through. And school and society have this way of making us feel like those are the only two ways in. You either wait your turn or you're born into it. But what I learned is that there's always, always the third door. And it's the entrance where you jump out of line, run down the alley, bang on the door a hundred times, crack open the window, go through the kitchen, there's always a way in. And it doesn't matter if that's how Bill Gates sold his first piece of software or how Lady Gaga got her first record deal, they all took the third door. When I started this journey, I was 18 years old, a freshman in college, and I was spending every day lying on my dorm room bed, staring up at the ceiling. And I was going through the, what do I want to do with my life crisis? And not only did I not know what I wanted to do with my life, I had no idea how all these people who I looked up to, how they did it. You know, how did Bill Gates sell his first piece of software out of his dorm room when nobody knew his name? Or how did Steven Spielberg become the youngest director in Hollywood history without a single hit under his belt? So the third door was my quest for answers. And what I realized is, and it took me about 70% into my journey to realize this third door mindset. Because it's not a recipe for success, it's a mindset of how to view your challenges. Because what I've learned is that no matter what obstacles are in front of you, there's always a way. The hard part is leaving the line for the first door because that's where your friends are standing, that's where your family expects you to be, that's where your school wants you to be. So leaving that line for the first door, that long queue where there's 99% of people standing, leaving that line is terrifying and it's the reason most people don't actually go to achieve their dream. So the biggest advice I would have for anybody who wants to start a business, who wants to write a book, who wants to just make themselves into the person they always knew they could be, my biggest advice would be if you're scared, if you're nervous, that's okay. That's a normal part of the process and it's essential for you to get through that in order for you to go get what you want.
If you're young and you have anxiety or fear about your future and wants to know what their path is or wants to know what you know their passion is and something that helps simplify it is something I call the 30-day challenge. This is a practice, a tool anybody can use. So go get a notebook and on the cover of the notebook write 30-day challenge and then for the next 30 days, at the same time every day, journal in that notebook about three questions. Answer three questions. Number one, what excited me today? Number two, what drained me of energy today? And then number three, what did I learn about myself today? And if you journal on these three things every day for 30 days, by the end, you'll start to see a neon sign pointing you in the right direction of your path. One of the people who really blew me away was the music producer Quincy Jones. And Quincy Jones is the most successful music producer in American history. And something he taught me is that I had always thought the opposite of success is failure. And what he helped me see is that not only is success not the opposite of failure, success and failure are actually different results of the same thing. So the opposite of success isn't failure. The opposite of success is not trying. And not only was that one of the biggest lessons I learned from Quincy Jones, it's also one of the biggest things I've realized that all the most successful people have in common, which is there's this innate understanding of that relationship of success and failure and how they're not opposites, but they're actually different parts of the same path. When I started out, you know, I was 18 years old and I was completely terrified when I was sitting down and interviewing all these, you know, very well-known leaders that my throat would clench up, my mouth would be wired shut and I would sort of become paralyzed. And two things helped me. Number one, just doing it and practicing it over and over again, I became more calm. But number two, that helped me the most was slowly coming to the realization that these are human beings. They might have more money than me, they might be more famous than me, but they're not more human than me. And that helped me relax tremendously. What's interesting about the third door is that it's a mindset for success and not a recipe for success. You know, if you look at all these different, you know, recipes that other people have lived their life by, while the recipes might be different, the ingredients are essentially the same. You know, there's of course hard work and there's relationships and there's, you know, learning and education and all these different factors. What's interesting is that in every story, in every person I interviewed and researched, they might have different amounts of ingredients. You know, one person, you know, Lu Chi, who I interviewed, you know, president of Microsoft becomes CEO of Baidu. For him, you know, hard work is a very big ingredient in his recipe. For maybe Bill Gates, it was about, you know, strategy and intellect. And for everyone, might, for Warren Buffett, it was, you know, very deep learning and very patient. And the key is to actually ask yourself, what are my strengths and how can I double down on that? Because that's what's going to make you the most successful version of you. The first question you have to ask yourself is how do you want to make that money? So if you don't even know the answer to that, the thing I would recommend is go read different articles and different books on different people with a lot of money who you admire and go see their path. You know, go read the biography of Jack Ma. Go read an article about Lu Chi. And that's, you know, what I did with The Third Door. And the beautiful part is you start to see, okay, I like the way Lu Chi did it, but oh, I don't really like the way Bill Gates did it. Or you start to see what works for you. So anyone young who wants to, you know, let's say make a million dollars, go find other examples of people who have done it and go learn from them and then start practicing it in your own life.
the biggest thing I will tell you is you're going to make mistakes along the way, but there's a good way to handle it and a bad way to handle it. Some people hate their mistakes. When they make a mistake, they don't want to talk about it. They want to ignore it. They want to pretend it never happened. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. What I learned from Quincy Jones is that the key is to cherish your mistakes. Treat your mistakes like your best friend, and only then can you grow. Is one of the biggest mistakes you can make is trying to completely replicate someone else's path. What you need to do is look at that path, study it, see what works for you. But remember that the reason that worked for them, the reason you know something worked for Jack Ma is because of the very special circumstances he was in. And the circumstances you're in are different. So you have to be very thoughtful and very mindful before you go and copy something. You have to ask yourself, what makes you, you? Because only then can you know the right move. I'm Alex Benayan, author of The Third Door. Knowledge, intelligence, future. I'm on Ecotalks.